The pony's red coat was thick with mud and burrs. He was afraid of the men who shouted and waved their arms at him, and sweat lathered his neck and streaked along his withers. He pulled up short at the corral gate, reared and almost fell backwards as a lasso passed near his head. Quickly, he wheeled and ran to the middle of the corral, where he stood a moment in baffled fear, his full sides heaving, his hooves catching nervously at the hard soil. One of the men slipped down from the gate and walked slowly toward him, a lariat swinging in his hands. He paused and for a second, Colt and man stared appraisingly at one another. The lasso made a preliminary upward and backward motion, but at that instant, the pony rushed ahead, reared over his tormentor as if he would crush him there beneath his hooves, and then, with a whinny, stepped daintily to the side and romped to the far end of the corral. The man, taken by surprise, had fallen to the earth in an effort to avoid being trampled. Now he got to his knees and grappled in the dirt for his rope. Silently, he picked up his broad-brimmed hat and slapped it on his thigh. A fine spray of dust left it, and at this, his companions, who had been watching and startled, quiet, snorted with laughter. Tears of mirth brightened their eyes as they stomped the ground with their feet, swept by paroxysm after paroxysm of delight. Their fallen comrade stood up and sauntered over to where they stood huddled at the gate. He was not tall, but his thinness intensified his height. He gazed steadily at them with an impersonal violence in his odd, electric blue eyes. It was impossible to tell from his face whether he was amused and merely playing it up to his companion's hilarity by pretending not to be amused, or whether he wished them all dead. God, Tama, I'll never forget the way you looked rolling on the ground with that pony prancing around you, the man sitting on the gatepost said at last. He removed his hat and refitted it further back on his head, as an automatic signal that he was done with laughing and was now ready to discuss the problem seriously. Now, boys, Tom said quietly, that ain't funny. I might have been killed. He spoke with dispassionate sadness, which sent even the man on the gatepost into a fresh outburst. His fierce eyes flashed again with the same impenetrable emotion. I should really shoot that pony, he added softly. He's dangerous. He glanced sideways at the man on the gatepost as he said this. However, the pony's owner was still laughing and did not bother to answer. Tom's hand fell to his holster, and he drew out a short-barreled thirty-eight revolver, which he leveled at the pony in quiet concentration. At this, the man on the post ceased laughing. For goodness sakes, Tom! Tom turned his face slightly. For goodness sakes, I said, a joke's a joke! The other man jumped down from the fence and stood before the thirty-eight, his hand extended. There was a moment of silence as the others watched the scene between the two men. The pony's owner had the county sheriff's star pinned to his jacket. He was taller than Tom, lean with the muscular leanness which comes from years of hard work. His face was lined, as if the lines had been dug into dark rubber with a knife. His green eyes were canny, netted by sun wrinkles. They met the ecstatic savagery in Tom's eyes calmly, as he reached out and slowly took away the gun. He had me going there, he said good-naturedly. He returned the weapon to Tom's holster. You had me going for sure. The onlookers plunged back into laughter, not at Tom now, but at the other man's admission. For the first time, Tom's features cracked into a smile. In another minute, he was laughing with them. They were still laughing when the girl rounded the side of the barn and came up behind them. She stood watching them, her weight evenly divided in her boots, and her fists thrust deep into the pockets of her Levi's. Then she grasped a post and swung her light body up to straddle the top board. From this vantage point, she looked down at the man who had been astride the gate. Haven't you roped that pony yet, Pat? Pat Johnson came over to lean against the fence beside her. He moved his Stetson hat and ran his stumpy fingers through his kinky grizzled hair. Now don't lose your confidence, Paula. We was letting Tom have a whirl at him before we really tried to round him up. She glanced at Tom and then back at Pat, her clear eyes questioning. Pat nodded 